Hi everyone at UAB, Phil Hansen here. And you know if you've seen me that that means the artwork is, is finished. All the little drawings you do, it, is, it has come together. And it's actually right there, just off frame, but I'm not gonna pan over quite yet because of course I wanna remind you of the time that we spent together in the, in the big room there in the auditorium, all of you doing these amazing little drawings on your phones, drawing each other, your pets, the things you can't live without, and the things that you felt limited by, challenged by. And then here in the studio, when I got back, I downloaded all those digital files and then used this big, amazing setup to bring together the final mosaic image. I'm gonna let that animation there fade away a little bit so you can see the artwork now with me here in person. So here we have for you something you are going to recognize. Check this out, a picture of Blaze the Dragon. <laughs> I absolutely love how this came together. And to you take all of your work, you know, all of you at UAB to take all of your little drawings, your contributions, and, and to make this picture is super, super cool. Now, what I love about it is when you are far away, it is a very different experience than when you're up close, right? Because when you're far away, you're seeing the bigger picture, the, the, the larger whole. But then when we get close to it, that's where we get to see all the individual little components, all the bits and pieces. And actually, let's dig into some of these dark ones. These are things you couldn't live without. And there was somebody who took the idea very literally and wrote water. They, they can't live without water. That great little scene, jazz fest, food, drinks, going on vacation. Bottom left, somebody's going for a run. I love that one. <laughs> I also asked you to draw your pets, and we probably had a couple desired pets here, the panda and the unicorn, <laughs> but there were some great fish, that cat Tibbs and the turtle. I also asked you to write things that you felt limited by, challenged by, and there were things like funding, uh, the truth, uncertainty, caregiving, age, and the bottom right there, somebody wrote me. They felt like they were limited and challenged by themselves. And I think, you know, this is really one of the most powerful parts about this artwork is that when you get close to it, you get to see what everybody's going through, you know, and there's always this experience behind the scenes that there's a little more happening for each of us that we don't quite share with everyone. And of course, I asked you to draw each other. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun moment in the room and I thought these were absolutely great. I love the, the top row, second from the right, they even captured the whole scene, the phone, the person sitting. And then the bottom right, I'm guessing that's glasses, but I like that it kind of looked like an eye mask. <laughs> And you know, for me, what mosaic art really ends up representing is this visualization of the bigger picture. You know, because I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, you know, like a day will go by and I'm not entirely sure what I got done with my day. But here in mosaic art, we can see that visualization, that, that, that metaphor, right? Where all of the contributions, all the bits and pieces that we do throughout the day, how they add up to create the, the larger whole. And of course, all of you in that room gathered together, you know, to being able to create the, the bigger atmosphere. I thought it was really, really nice to capture this image with all the work that you created. All right, now the moment you've been waiting for, zooming in and checking it out for yourself, you can now head over to this website. You can do just that. And of course, you can compare and make sure that you found your drawing with all those screen captures that I had you do during, during the event there. All right, well, thank you all again so much for doing the drawings. It was an absolute delight to go through them all and to, to bring the big picture together. So thanks again. Now, before I go entirely, I do want to share a couple final videos with you, my own artworks, because, you know, I love to keep myself open to the possibilities because it's in that unknown space. That's where really interesting things can happen, like being able to make a huge picture of Blaze with all of your little drawings. And so for me, like one time, I, after it had rained and I was on a walk, I realized, you know, I've seen all these worms on the, on the ground, on the sidewalk. And I was like, what if I picked up all the worms and made a picture? Well, after some testing, I, it, it was working. And so what I did is I was able to to order over 7,000 worms, let them wriggle together on the studio floor, and eventually come together to create a gigantic portrait of poet Edgar Allan Poe. Or taking an absolutely beautiful Fender Stratocaster lefty, then assembling the bits and pieces to make a picture of Kurt Cobain, and then smashing that. And the final video that I'm gonna play for you, and then I will let this one fade into the black at the end, is one time I was running around doing some errands, and then I had to get some food. And I got a couple hamburgers, got some french fries, and as I was finishing the couple hamburgers, and I reach into the bag for the last french fry, because of course you always gotta dig into the bag and find that last french fry, I realized as I was doing that, that I could actually see my skin tone through the white paper bag because some of the burger grease had dribbled out, made the paper a little bit transparent, and we've all seen that, and it's always a little bit gross. But in that moment, as I looked over and I could see my skin tone through the white paper bag, I realized, 
like, wait a second, if I could do this appropriately, maybe I can make different shades on a sheet of paper using hamburger grease. So here we go.